Mr. Trump, we're talking. Typical ta politician. All talk, no action. Sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen. Our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. Now, look, we have the worst revival of an economy since the Great Depression. And believe me, we're in a bubble right now. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. Wow, Donald Trump calling the big, fat bubble. Whoa, Trump knows what he's talking about, right? Right? Trump called it. So you heard him? Big, fat bubble standing next to Hillary Clinton in 2016 running for the president running for that presidency he knew he had the answer right? it was a big fat bubble but ever since what happened now now the markets the markets are doing fantastic the economy is doing great right it's all now it's not a bubble anymore now it's a good economy right okay just i'm just pointing out the contradiction trump is doing you know he's he's got a, he understands he obviously in his own words understands and it's easy to stick it in someone like hillary clinton's face especially when she's standing next to you with that face you could muff it in her face right but here's the here's the bubble so today i'm going to talk about a couple of things right i want to um i have a couple of videos i want to play um an exceptional video that someone posted down below uh by a guy named uh linden uh leiden laroche leiden laroche remember this guy from the uh in the 70s he, he formed the uh, labor party he's been he claims to have predicted aids i'll read off his his resume uh, uh, in a second, but uh, very, very, very interesting guy, and what he says. But I just want to preface it with some of um, some of the current events that are going on right now. So the Fed rate, right? Let's talk about that, right? So the Fed's just upped the Fed rate to two point two, right? Two point two five, right? They keep jacking it up. The target is three and a half. What is it? Yeah. 3.5 by 2020 right so what does that mean what does that mean for for regular people in terms of uh you know debt to cost of living ratio right let's let's talk about it, right so let's just look at debt right see what trump is talking about is that the that the market is a bubble but there's more to it the real bubble is the debt bubble right because in 2008 all of the debt all of the the market um the market was stacked on top of the price of real estate. Now it's stacked on top of debt, right? They're actually using debt, the interest on the debt, as revenue, right? It's bullshit because people don't pay it, right? Well, you'll pay it never completely. You'll just keep paying till the day you die, right? And your 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 um, uh, quality of life is greatly diminished because of it. Right? So listen to the debt. <clears throat> student loans 1.5 trillion dollars in america trillion with a t one in four americans affected mortgage debt 13.15 trillion dollars in debt right that means that average americans owe <clears throat> the banks the banks 13.5 trillion dollars Credit card debt, one trillion dollars in credit card debt. These are huge numbers, right? <clears throat> huge <clears throat> trillion dollar debts, right? What is the U.S. debt <clears throat> overall to other countries? Twenty-one trillion dollars in debt, right? It's debt. That's causing the problem because the debt is piled on top of you and you're expected to pay, right? Also in tax, right? The, the government brings in $3.7 trillion a year in tax. That's technically not a debt. That's technically a, that's revenue. That's revenue, income tax. Your money is revenue, right? That's what the government is is fueling this whole monster on, while the corporations that generate tr trillions of dollars don't pay any tax. You pay the tax. You're carrying the corporations and their stock market and, and, all, and all that's attached to it, right? 
And you're happy. Everybody, people are happy about it. They don't care, right? Whatever. I don't know. It doesn't affect me. What are you talking about? The fucking, it doesn't, what? It's so far removed. I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. Well, it, it affects us, right? It, it affects us in so many ways. So what is the Fed rate, right? In the 1980s, the Fed rate was 20%. Right now, it's 2.0, 2.5. Right? What does that mean? It means that the, the, the cost of money to the banks, right, lending, is it, it's more expensive for you and I, but it's actually a, it actually benefits the banks. Right? And if you don't believe me, I'll show you somebody who, who could explain it to you in his own words. You remember Jamie Dimon, the video I had, I played the other day where, where the... CEO for J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, tells you in his own words that recessions are good for the bank. They're good for us. Yeah, American people, fucking who cares, right? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, working people, unemployed, uh, oh yeah, it's terrible for them, but what does that have to do with me, right? It's all about, it's making the money, right? See, that's the, that's the business model of corporations. The business model of corporations is profit, right? It's nothing else. It's not empathy it's not trickled down so that everybody gets a piece of the pie that gain you know look and the other thing about this is look, when people say handouts right everybody wants free stuff no you're an american citizen right and in that citizenship you you are you have a birthright to to enjoy the prosperity of the nation right you don't have a right to have a bank steal your prosperity and then call you a, a freeloader, right? While they're freeloading. See, there, there's a there's a confusion in that speech when people say, "Oh, they just socialists. They want to give all this free stuff." No, you're falling into the the the, the corporate narrative, the banking narrative that you want something free while they're taking all of your money from you. They're trying to convince you that you have no stake in the American way of life. You have no stake in America. You want what? You want to, you, you, you actually think like because you live here and because you work here and because you're an American citizen and you're, you're a patriotic taxpaying person that you actually have a right to, 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 to prosper, you know, in an, in a, in a mutual way in terms of, you know, better quality of life, infrastructure, health care, college tuition, uh, you know, a, a, a green new deal, jobs. You have a right to that? What are you, crazy? What are you? What, you're, what are you? You're a freeloader, right? That's what they try to convince you, right? And people play into the narrative because they're pulling out algraic terms like socialism and communism and Marxism and, and all this bull fucking shit, right? Stop. Stop doing it to yourself. Right? You're not doing it to me by coming here calling Conti a socialist. You, you trust me. You're not. You're. I leave it there so that people could see how stupid you are. But it's not stupid. It's just. It's just on. It's un, uninformed. That's what this is about. Right? So. So the Fed rate is going to keep jacking up the. Uh, what does it mean? When the Fed raises the rate, the money supply decreases. This is just statistics, and the interest rates go up. Right, so that the the cost of money is higher, right? So if you have a car, if you, have, if you try to buy a house, the interest rate goes up, right? That's what it means, right? The banks love it. The banks love it, right? Equity markets, um, the the stock markets are up 180 percent since 2009. That's significant, and it's all on the back of debt. So the bubble we're talking about is debt. Trump points out. The market bubble, but the real bubble is debt. The debt market, right? That's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to get to La Roche's video in a second. I just want to get this all on the record before you, before you um, watch it, so you'll have a, a a better preface of what he's saying and the intensity of it, because now you know the background. Right? So, um, profits go up when the when the when the Fed rate goes up, right? For banks, not for you, not for me, for them, right? Because the enemy is the bank. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the prize, which is the banks, right? Massive, uh, because of massive cash holdings, right? So the rate goes up and the, the yield on your cash that they're holding goes up, right? So um, when rates rise, the spread, oh, they also make money on that spread. Because as the, as the rate rises, they're then 
they're then getting money at a percentage point lower and and trading it to you at a percentage point higher. So if they lend 10 million, they get back 20 million. You know, it, it's to I'm sorry, to lend 20 million, they get it at 10 million. All right? So they're making money. They make money on every trade in addition to all the other stuff that I just talked about. So the banks benefit. They love it. You don't believe me? Let's look all right. Let's listen to it in Let's listen to it in Jamie Dimon's own words, pal. I don't look at a recession as a bad thing. Even a recession could be good for JP Morgan's share price. Here is their chairman and CEO, Jamie Dimon. I mean, it's bad for America. It's bad for the people unemployed. It's usually an opportunity for JP Morgan. The Fed is doing political by keeping the interest rates at this level. And believe me, the day Obama goes off and he leaves and he goes out to the golf course for the rest of his life to play golf, when they raise interest rates, you're going to see some very bad things happen because the Fed is not doing their job. The Fed is being more political than Secretary Clinton. Trump said the Fed is more political than Hillary Clinton. <laughs> That's a diss. Oh, shit. But you hear what he's saying, right? He's, uh, Trump, is, Trump is identifying the swamp. Now, I know everybody likes to think the swamp is the deep state. It's it's all these creatures, you know, in the FBI and the CIA. And they're, they're evil motherfuckers, right? But they're fueled by the banking system. They're fueled by, they're funded by the banking cartel, right? That's the swamp, right? Forget about the, the creatures, the, the, the uh, foot soldiers. That's a good term for them, right? The foot soldiers of the war are the deep state right they've been they've been you know uh hijacked right by the banking cartel but keep your eye on the prize the prize is the banks you heard trump say it right you heard jamie diamond in his own words say that recession is good for us uh, we make money right they don't care about that you don't care about anything but profit, right? You heard him say, unemployed people, what, that has nothing to do with me. I don't know. It's not good. It's good for America? No, it's bad for America, but that has nothing to do with what we do, right? These are the people that we've entrusted with our economy. These are the bad guys. These are the, the guys causing the problem, and they're going to get every break now. Now they're going to sink the stock market, all the, the pension funds and all the people that have their money in the stock market, they're going to choke those people out because they're not, they already got their money, right? You see how it works? Once the money comes in, it's bait and switch, right? It's, it's the market is a Ponzi scheme. It's hot potato. And guess what? You just got caught holding the hot potato, right? And the banks are going to, they're pulling out. You see what they're doing, right? The markets are going to go down. The market's all broke support. The NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P are now in almost in a free fall. Right, the market, stock market's coming down. Right, right. Now you say, oh yeah, gold and silver. Now you can't eat fucking gold. You can't eat silver. Right. Maybe those currencies can. Maybe a, a, a different types of currency, different type of currency market. Right. But that's prediction, speculation. Watch this video right now. I want to preface it by telling you who this guy is because he's just an interesting guy. L Lyndon Laroche. 1973, he created the U.S. Labor Party. You're going to love this video. I'm telling you. I watched it. Someone posted it down below, and I watched it. I was like, wow. I remember the guy. I remember his name, you know, kind of as a little kid. But uh, he's 94 or 96. I think he's still alive. All right, so 1975, he was called, they, the FBI director, Clarence Kelly, called him a revolutionary socialist. Right? So they, they, the deep state tagging people with that with that slur he's a marxist he's a socialist he's working with the russian right see they do that to throw the to take your eye off the ball right take your take your take your nose off the scent right don't fall for it stop falling for it he claims to have predicted uh, aids in, eight, in 1986 uh he was accused of credit card fraud obstruction of justice 1986 went to jail from 89 to 94 always always uh said that he was innocent that it was campaign contributions and it wasn't any kind of credit card fraud right he said he uh he was one of the first to call 9-11 an inside job this is modern history 2007 campaign 
campaign talked about restoring the glass steagall act which separates the the act keeps a separation between uh commercial banks and investment banks right glass steagall is that act they threw it away they threw it in the garbage right <laughs> Right, so now it's all one, right? They could take your money and gamble it in the in the fake stock market, in the Ponzi scheme, right? For in two thousand nine, he was for uh, single payer health care, right? He's always said that uh, Israel is an occupation, which makes him an anti Semite, not an anti Zionist. Right? Love those terms, man. Those fucking terms, right? We're all full of our terms, right? We got so many terms, we don't know what to do with them all, right? right keep your eye on the ball. So check out the uh, check out Laroche. This is great. I'll be right back. What we're involved in today is a general breakdown crisis of the world financial monetary system. There is no possible rescue of this system as such. That is, the in present international monetary system cannot be rescued. If you try to rescue it, you will lose the planet. You have to choose. Replace the system or get a new planet. The world incurred a presently outstanding debt through such means as derivatives and the order of quadrillions of dollars, far in advance of anything that could ever be paid. So we are never, never going to pay those debts. We couldn't pay those debts. So we're never going to pay them. What do you do in a case like that? What does the United States do in a case like that under our Constitution? You declare those debts in bankruptcy. And what do you do with them in bankruptcy? You sort them out. Those things that should be supported will be supported, and the rest of it will just wait or die away. Now you have two ways to go. Either you collapse the world with starvation and mass death and those effects, or you put the thing through bankruptcy reorganization. I have four nations in mind that can take the lead on this thing. And the four nations which together represent the greatest consolidation of power on this planet. These nations are the United States, Russia, China, and India. Now, if the United States says that we are going to back up our dollar and enter us into an agreement with Russia, China, and India to join us with other countries in doing the same thing to put the world through bankruptcy reorganization, in which we will cancel most of the outstanding financial obligations, it has to happen. Otherwise, no planet. If you try to collect on quadrillions of dollars of outstanding claims. From whom are you going to collect? By what means? And what's the effect? It is against natural law to collect on that debt. How many people are you going to kill to collect that debt? How many countries are you going to destroy to collect that debt? So therefore we can create a new credit system among nations, which I think, with, if the United States, Russia, China, and India agree, most nations of the world will happily join us, especially considering the alternative. So under these conditions, we then proceed to world reconstruction. And what we do, instead of the present system, free trade system, we go back to a protectionist system, a fixed rate system. In other words, currencies will have a fixed rate of exchange with respect to each other. They're adjustable by treaty arrangements, but they do not float. And we then proceed to utter the credit for large-scale infrastructure investment, which will be the driver of the physical reconstruction of the planet. That's the only remedy. Wow, what a great American, right? You heard what he said? You see, it's a form of bankruptcy. See, it's in, in today, it's expressed in simple yellow vest, right? It's divest. See, a lot of the things, here's where I would disagree with him. A lot of the things, everything he's talking about is spot on. 
bankruptcy, right? You have to, the, the four major countries that he pointed out, US, China, Russia, and India, if they all came to the table and agreed to delete the debt, right? Debt relief with each other and, and third world nations, right? right? Then we would, we would be moving forward at, in debt relief at home too, because in addition to that debt, you would also, you would also relieve the debts within the country, which I talked about student loan debt, mortgages, what would these things look like is, is gray. It doesn't mean that you, that suddenly you don't owe anything on your house, but you would, you would owe maybe a, a, a like the equivalent of a, a, a regular rent of something for a while until, because you're not paying the bank anymore. You're not making the bank billions of dollars. The bank is taken out of the equation. But um, I, I love what he said about trying to collect. Right? See, see, the government, no one's going to challenge the United States and threaten them for their $13 trillion that the U.S. owes. I'm sorry, $21 trillion that they owe. But the government will take your freaking house away from you if you don't pay on that mortgage. They will seize your bank account if you don't give them that student loan that can't be expunged in bankruptcy, right? right. They'll take your shit, right? But if someone tries to take their shit, they'll use your tax money to use the army, with uh, the, the, the military with guns to fight it off, right? You see the contradiction there? Or if 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 some scum scum banker like Goldman Sachs and Lloyd Blankfein get on a plane and go over and make a deal with Greece and and sink the economy, or George Soros shorts the Thai bot and wrecks the country, right? That's okay. That's that's fair game. And they're, they're, those countries that are in debt to these banks better fucking pay, right? You see what what Laroche is talking about is that the banks are not human. They don't care about social ramifications of their actions. All they care about is the profit. And that's a devastatingly backwards philosophy for the for for, for, for mankind, right? It's it's it, it needs to stop. Right? It needs to end. So that's what the that's what the bubble is. I'm gonna try to come back down to earth now. I know I went way out there, but the, the idea is that what's on the table now is is this uh, economy stacked on top of debt, right? And now you're seeing the Fed, the banking cartel, start to play against it, right? And choke it. And then ultimately, when something goes wrong, they're going to eventually go to Trump and say, look, your only way out of this is to deal with us, right? You want to freeze the banks? You want... You want to uh, cause, you know, mass chaos in the streets? Well, then you better you better deal with us. And if Trump folds like Obama folded, o Obama folded like a like a beach chair in two thousand eight, right? He just Bush went along with it. Bush set it up, and then Obama signed it, right? Like no problem, right? The bailout, the TARP money, the billions and billions and seven hundred and the trillion, two trillion, five trillion. We don't even know how many trillion dollars these banks took from the taxpayers and did they pay it back eh, it's bullshit who knows if they ever paid it back but if if we come around full circle again when the market when the market crashes and if we should get a run on the bank if the secretary of the treasury goes into the office of the president surrounded by lord lloyd blankfein of goldman sachs and jamie diamond of jp morgan chase and 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 all these other banks the wells fargo right get city group in there right and they're surrounded by the president saying mr president we have a problem remember when henry paulson told bush that we have a problem and bush said looked out into the camera and told the american people yeah we have a problem we better we got a problem right and and if trump folds like a like a like a beach chair to that well then we should just sign ourselves into slavery we should become uh servants to the master because it it's already the case is already hopeless right for the change to come from the top down these people are not capable of self-regulation right it has to come from the bottom up and what is that it's as i said simple yellow vest right a a global boycott in the west of the banking cartel refuse to pay straight out 
We will not pay student loans. We will not pay mortgages. We will not pay tax. Right? We will not pay credit card debt. We refuse to pay until there's a reset, a financial reset that, rep that, that benefits the people and not just the banks that are raping us dry. So I hope that was helpful. My name is Marcus Conti reporting. Kindly make a contribution while we're talking about money. <laughs> This isn't free to do, you know. Um, if you if you like this content and you you believe that uh, that uh, what I'm doing is advancing the ball, moving it forward, kindly consider a a Patreon. I know a lot of people have already, but a lot most people have not. And um, I know everybody wants everything free, and we live. People are saying, yeah, 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 nothing's free, but uh, then they come here and they watch this for free, right? Just a dollar in the tip jar. It's insulting to not throw a dollar in the tip jar. You listen to the band in the subway, right? You listen. You like the music. You listen to three or four songs, and then you walk away, right? And the guy's, that's the guy. That's his business, right? This is, I mean, for lack of a better term, this is what I do. I don't have any other magical, you know, income. I I hold no stocks. I hold, you know. So this is what I do. Kindly make a contribution, uh, a a pledge for a dollar to three dollars, uh, via Patreon. Which seems to seems to work, and uh, if you, if you can't do that, do a one-time uh, PayPal uh, uh, contribution. I'm not at the point where I can generate T-shirts or stickers or a, a, at this point, but uh, uh, so but uh, it, it, it's definitely coming. Marcus Conti reporting. Thank you for your support.